Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, long time no see. Now, as you know, I've not made many videos lately because I've been pretty busy with my primary job, but a new set of videos came out that just required my attention. And they're from this gentleman, Taboo Conspiracy. And here are the videos in question. How a pilot ended the globe, part one and part two. These are definitely making the rounds on the Flat Earth servers in the Flat Earth community. And they seem to view everything that this guy puts out as an absolute slam dunk flat earth proof. Now, while in the first video he spends a lot of time demonstrating that he has no idea how airplanes work, the meat of the matter is, is that he has a time lapse of a flight from Zurich, Switzerland to Sao Paulo, Brazil. Now, it's a nighttime flight with stars and the Milky Way clearly visible through the windscreen of the aircraft. And he watches it over thousands of miles. Now, based on his extremely limited understanding of astronomy, he feels that this is a slam dunk, flat earth proof, and absolutely disproves the globe. I'm going to go ahead and let him make his argument. We are going to analyze an amazing time lapse filmed by a pilot on a flight from Munich, Germany to Sao Paulo, Brazil. You can find the unedited version on this website. Please note that this Beyond Clouds website has no association with the Flat Earth, which means this evidence comes from an unbiased party. The distance for the full flight from Munich to Sao Paulo is over 6,000 miles, but the recording was only for approximately 3,000 miles. That begins before Palma, located on the island of Mallorca, Spain, and the video ends before the equator after the plane passes Dakar, Senegal, on the western coast of Africa. Of course, some movement of the stars is expected with any time lapse. Keep in mind that when you're in the north and facing southwest, like in this flight, the stars should rotate in a downward slant to the right and clockwise motion somewhat like this. For this time lapse, we're going to track these two stars. The one on top seems to have a tail of stars that rise up and to the left. It's easy to spot. For brevity, I'm going to speed up the footage. The plane is going to adjust its heading left and right a few times, but try to keep an eye out for those two stars. There are the two stars again. Here they are over on the right side. They have dropped a little, but here they are again. And that's the end of the time lapse. Okay, so there's his argument. Now, there's a couple of very interesting things that he notices in here. First of all, the Earth is rotating. And as you can clearly see from these star trails right here, it's rotating in a clockwise fashion because they're heading more or less south. The second claim that he is making is that on a globe, the stars will appear to rise in the windshield. Now, here's the problem that he runs into. Now, even though he recognizes that both of these things are occurring, in other words, the stars are rotating and they're rising in the windshield, he doesn't seem to make the connection between the two. So let's go ahead and analyze this video from a scientific standpoint and see what's actually going on. The first thing that we need to do is that we need to figure out what we're looking at. Well, the first step is going to be identify the flight path of the aircraft. You know, I've sent a note to the company that made the uh, video to see if I could get the actual date of the flight. And I'll update that if it changes anything from this video. But we're going to use the initial comments in that video of April 2017 as an approximate date of the flight. That'll come in important later. Now here's the flight. It's Swiss Air 92 from Zurich, Switzerland, not Munich, but Zurich, Switzerland to Sao Paulo, Brazil. Let's go ahead and pull it up on FlightAware. Okay, so here's Swiss Air 92, and as I said, it's from Zurich, Switzerland to Sao Paulo, Brazil. Now, here's the current flight, but if we go back a little bit, we can find past flights. And the reason that I'm doing this is that the flights are taking a very specific route. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at this one right here. Now, As you can see, there's the flight route. According to what Ben was saying, it actually went over this island right here and Cape Verde down here. So that's not really close to the flight that we had, although it's not all that bad. There's going to be a reason that I'm gonna try and find a closer flight. 
Now this flight is probably a little bit closer to the actual flight. As you can see, we're going over that little island in the Mediterranean and it's going over Cape Verde over here. Now why did I do this? I wanted to get the timing of the flight. And if you look right here, and by moving this slider right here, we can find out when the plane was over Dakar, and likewise we can find out when it was over Palma. Now the reason that this is important is we need to know approximately how long of a flight it was from Palma to Dakar. Now the aircraft was over Palma about one hour into flight from Zurich, and then at about five hours into flight it was over Dakar. So there is about four hours difference between the two. The speed of the aircraft is 578 miles per hour. Now just looking at Google Earth from Palma to Dakar, we're looking at just over 2,000 miles and at an average speed of 578 miles per hour, four hours is a pretty reasonable transit time between those two points. So let's go back to Taboo Conspiracy and see what Ben has to say about this. This is the beginning position of the stars. Approximately 3,000 miles later, here is the ending position. As expected, the star slightly rotated clockwise and dropped slightly. You can even see how the star on top with the tail looks a little bigger and has rotated clockwise. So, what is the problem with this time lapse for the globe? The problem is that the plane has to be dipping its nose to account for the alleged curvature of the Earth. For simple illustration, if I had a stunning view of the stars at the beginning of my flight, as time progresses and the nose of the plane drops to account for the curvature of the Earth, the stars should appear to rise up like this. In fact, the nose of the airplane is allegedly dropping while the stars, which are somewhat fixed and allegedly separate from the Earth, should appear to rise up if we lived on a ball. But you don't need to believe my illustrations. Fortunately, Google Earth allows us to model this same flight with the stars in the background and shows us exactly what would happen if we lived on a globe. For this Google Earth model, I used our distance of roughly 3,000 miles on the exact same flight route that I showed earlier. I set the altitude at 10,000 meters or 32,800 feet. Remember, this is how the globe should work. Now, watch the stars. There is no question about it. As the viewpoint continually dips, the stars rise up, exactly as we would logically expect if we lived on a ball. Do you guys see the error he's making already? Let's go ahead and have a look back here. Now what I want you to do when you look at the Google rendering of this flight simulator, it's called Google Flight Simulator, I want you to pay special attention to the Milky Way. And more importantly, I want you to pay special attention to the orientation of the Milky Way. Let's have a look. This is how the globe should work. Now, watch the stars. Straight up. There is no question about it. As the viewpoint continually dips, the stars rise up exactly as we would logically expect if we lived on a ball. So what's the problem here? He is completely neglecting any rotation that occurred during that four hour interval between Palma and Dakar. So as the stars are rising up, they're also rotating. So let's go ahead and have a look at this in Stellarium. Now a little bit of astronomy. What I did was I did a screen grab of his view of the Milky Way and his two stars in question, and you can see it right there. And I uploaded it to something called Astrometry Net. And what it'll do is it'll take that image and it will plate solve it and tell me exactly what stars we're looking at and where we are looking in the sky. And here's the results. You'll see part of the zodiacal constellation of Sagittarius. Now the stars that he's referring to in this video are Klaus Australis and this star right here, which is in reality not a star at all. That is the Ptolemy star cluster. So let's go ahead and have a look at that region of the sky from Palma and approximately the time of the flight. So we've set Stellarium up for Palma, Spain. You can see the latitude and longitude there. It's about 39 degrees north and about 2 degrees east longitude. 
Now what we have to do is we have to get the date in. Now as I said, when they originally posted this video on the original site, it started getting comments in April of 2017. So let's go back to April of 2017 and see if we can match up the images that Taboo Conspiracy is posting. Okay, so here is Stellarium from Palma, and this is going to be on April 6th, just after midnight. So right here we have Klaus Australis, and here we have Ptolemy's Cluster. Now let's go ahead and compare that to his images. If you look at Ptolemy's Cluster, Klaus Australis is going to be over at about 10 o'clock. So let's go ahead and have a look at his image. Here we have Ptolemy's Cluster, and here we have Klaus Australis. Notice that Klaus Australis is at about 10 o'clock from the Ptolemy Cluster. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to stay at Palma, but we're going to advance the time four hours to take into account flight time from Palma down to Dakar. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, hours. That's approximately the time that we're going to reach Dakar. So let's go see where the Ptolemy cluster and Claus Australis is, or for that matter, where Sagittarius is. I don't see it, do you? Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Hmm, I don't see the constellation Sagittarius and I don't see Claus Australis or the Ptolemy cluster. Let's go ahead and turn off the ground. Well, there's the constellation Sagittarius there's Klaus Australis, and there's Ptolemy's Cluster. But the horizon is way up here. Hmm. Let's go ahead and put the Earth back in. That's well below the horizon. You know why? Because Earth is a sphere. So our two stars would be well below the horizon had we just stayed in Palma for four hours. But we didn't. We continued south towards the South Celestial Pole. Well, here's the horizon. Where's Klaus Australis, Sagittarius, and the Ptolemy Cluster? Well, let's have a look. There they are right there. There's Klaus Australis, and there's the Ptolemy Cluster. Notice that Klaus Australis is at about 1130 or so from the Ptolemy Cluster, and both are above the horizon. Now, because we're going over the curved surface of the Earth, dipping our nose, as Ben likes to say, those stars would rise up, as he clearly indicated. But he forgot to include the rotation of the stars as well. So this is what the rotating globe Earth says that the stars would look like. Let's go ahead and have a look at Ben's video. Now remember, once again, this is Palma, and Klaus Australis is at about 930 to the Ptolemy Cluster. Now, we predicted that four hours later, it would be at about 1130 compared to the Ptolemy cluster down in Dakar. Let's go have a look and see what that shows. The plane is going to adjust its heading left and right a few times, but try to keep an eye out for those two stars. There are the two stars again. Here they are over on the right side. Okay, so here is where we are at Dakar. Now, obviously, I'm not exactly sure where this was taken. Looks like we're approaching Dakar here. Now, here is the Ptolemy star cluster, and here is Klaus Australis. Notice that that is at about 11 o'clock, and if we just continue this a little bit longer, it gets to 1130. Now, just to make absolutely sure I'm not trying to pull one over on you, he has actually identified the exact same stars. This is the Ptolemy Cluster, and that is Klaus Australis. Notice that Klaus Australis is about 1130 to the Ptolemy Cluster, exactly as predicted on the globe. And it's above the horizon, exactly as predicted on the globe. Furthermore, you can see that it's down here by the horizon, because a couple of seconds ago, we actually saw the town of Dakar right there. So this is the horizon. You can see the lights on the horizon. So it's actually quite low on the horizon as well. Now on the second video where he's going uh, northeast instead of southwest on the flight, first of all, it doesn't have quite as many landmarks visible in it. But again, you see the counterclockwise rotation 
and the North Celestial Pole rising in the windshield. They both occur at the same time. So once again, that is exactly the same effect that we're seeing here. So once again, the rotating spherical Earth is confirmed by a flat earther. Now, since I made my first video in 2018, where I addressed the issue of pilots having to dip their nose in order to go over the curve of the Earth and why that was wrong, and since I am a pilot, I actually do know how airplanes operate. I don't think Ben over at Taboo Conspiracy is one. Uh, he clearly doesn't understand very much because he doesn't think that airplanes should work under the normal globe model. Now, this is a classic example of a flat earther using bravado and arrogance uh, and speaking with confidence on a subject that he has absolutely no knowledge of. Now, based on our analysis of this, it's very obvious that the Earth is a rotating sphere because we're seeing the rotation in the star field from the aircraft and the center of rotation and all the stars are moving up as we move towards the south. Likewise, you're on a northbound flight. Again, you see the counterclockwise rotation in the North Celestial Sphere moving up as well, exactly as you would expect to see on a rotating spherical Earth. Unbelievably, taboo conspiracy somehow is claiming that this is a flat Earth proof when we've gone through it, and it's exactly what you would expect on the globe. So once again, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Hopefully there won't be quite as long a wait until the next video. So until then, take care, guys.